Did you know that Canada is the second biggest country on the planet? Even more interesting is that over 80% of its land is uninhabited. That's a whole lot of space. This vast country borders the US to the south and northeast via Alaska. It stretches from the Pacific Ocean on its western coast to the Atlantic Ocean on its east. Of the 10 provinces in the country, Ontario generates nearly half of the nation's total production value. It boasts the largest economy with 38% of total GDP. As a result, it is also the most populated with over 14.5 million residents living there. All industrial provinces like the Pacific Coastal Region and Prairie have also received an influx of people in recent years. But things are not all sunshine and rainbows because the economic reality has worsened. From rising debts to increased inflation rates and youth unemployment, Canada's economy is headed to the point of no return. The reasons are obvious. First, there's a looming recession. By this time last year, panic was setting in, and everyone was on the edge of their seats, thinking Canada was on its way to another historic recession. Energy prices soared through the roof, annual inflation rates rose to 8.1%, and central banks were becoming more aggressive with interest rate hike campaigns. The question now isn't about whether Canada will slide into a recession but how painful it will be. And trust me, the indicators are clear. Canada's S&P 500 index slumped by at least 25%. The tech sector packed up, leading to thousands of layoffs. And big banks like Silicon Valley and First Republic Bank packed their bags. But then, unemployment rates in Canada and the US are relatively low, suggesting a glimmer of hope for this fragile economy. In fact, the country recorded stronger than expected economic growth in the first quarter, thanks to resilient consumers. But you see, Canada's household debt is rising at an alarming rate. It went from 13.45 in the first quarter of 2022 to 14.9 in the first quarter of 2023. Simply put, Canadian families spend a huge chunk of their earnings to cover their mortgage and loan payments. To put this into perspective, for every $100 earned, around 14.9 is used to pay debts. And guess what? Canada has the highest level of household debt in the G7, with mortgages making up three quarters of that debt. But Canada's high levels of debt are nothing new. Strong population growth naturally increases demand for housing and boosts prices in the market where debt has been previously cheap for home buyers. To balance this increasing debt, consumers would have to spend less, which could further contract the economy. The Bank of Canada isn't playing nice either. To reduce inflation, it has consistently increased interest rates. In July of 2023, the Bank of Canada surprised citizens with a full percentage point rate increase. The interest rate now stands at 5%, the largest since 1998. Why? The theory is simple. Economists think that by making borrowing more expensive, demand will drop, forcing an economic slowdown. While reducing inflation is good, interest rate hikes mean more expensive mortgages, small business loans, credit cards, and auto loans. Many widely criticize this move, but the bank considers it one of the best ways to stabilize Canada's ailing economy interest rates could go higher until it stabilizes in 2025. And no, inflation rates may never return to pre-pandemic levels. Ironically, Canada's economy was tagging along nicely earlier this year until June, when it began to show signs of a slowdown. The GDP was up to 0.3% in May, with growth in service-producing sectors exceeding declines in goods. Federal workers returned to their desks, and rebounding housing markets in some of Canada's largest cities were also a boost. Unfortunately, construction activity contracted by 0.8%, while forest fires in Alberta slowed down quarrying, mining, and oil and gas growth. 
Let's not forget that the energy sector was severely impacted by forest fires, causing it to contract by 2.1% in May. The last time Canada experienced such a decline was in August of 2020. Canada's economic woes have a ripple effect on the country's housing market. It is experiencing one of the biggest housing bubbles in history, and nobody knows what will happen next. So, in July 2023, Canada's real estate, leasing, and rental topped the GDP charts with a whopping $267 billion, followed by manufacturing with a distant $193 billion, oil and gas for $160 billion, and finance for $151 billion. The country's GDP stood at $2 trillion that month. But guess what? Compared to July 1999, the real estate market accounted for only $139 billion, while manufacturing was at $193 billion, followed by other sectors. Over the last few years, investors have become increasingly interested in the real estate market. In cities like Vancouver, the market is shaped by the interests and perceptions of investors. The relatively stable market makes it more attractive to homeowners and prospective investors. House prices have skyrocketed, and steady returns on investments are guaranteed. The irony of this growth is that real estate does not inject sufficient wealth into the country's economy as much as the manufacturing and oil and gas sectors. Plus, the government is deliberately hampering growth in other productive sectors thanks to some regulations that scare potential investors. Experts are ringing the alarm bells and warning that the levels of debts Canadians have taken and soaring housing prices put the market at a high risk of unraveling. The increasing debt to income ratio is a concern, but you won't blame Canadians. House prices are skyrocketing daily, and they fear they won't be able to afford it in the coming years. Therefore, it is best to secure their spot. Historically, low interest rates have been the motivation behind soaring housing prices. The low rates make borrowing more affordable and increase demand for housing. But with rising interest rates, Canadians will struggle to meet their debt obligation. And the reality? A housing market crash is imminent. To make matters worse, the housing market is driven by speculation rather than actual demand. People buy houses not because they need them, but as a form of investment. Speculative activities like these inflate prices and increase the risks of a housing bubble. A housing bubble burst doesn't only affect the housing sector, but has severe consequences on other sectors like construction and banking too. For instance, Canadian banks and other lending institutions will have to deal with mortgage resets and homeowners unable to meet mortgage obligations. Already, many banks have reported that one-fifth of their outstanding mortgages have negative amortization, which occurs when payments no longer cover interest obligations. A decline in housing prices would also make homeowners feel less wealthy and unwilling to make big-ticket purchases. Home sales are taking a nosedive down by nearly 40%, running close to the pace seen during the Great Recession and the lockdown period. Thanks to high interest rates, homeowners are discouraged from selling their homes. There are few sales underway as we speak. Experts say there are about four months of supply, more than double the level at the start of 2022. Although the home sales decline is general, there are significant variations across geographies, with Toronto and Vancouver being the worst hit. The metro areas in the prairie provinces are also affected. Sales lowered in Calgary, but are gradually picking up in Edmonton. In Halifax, home sales declined by 17% compared to the previous year. And here's where it gets more frustrating for citizens and the government. Youth unemployment, is at an all-time high compared to previous years. Here's the reality. In May of 2023, Canada said goodbye to 17,000 jobs, pushing the unemployment rate to 5.2%. This decline is fueled by the 77,000 jobless youths aged 15 to 24, 
Meanwhile, employment increased by 63,000 among adults between 25 and 54 years of age. It is the first time since August of 2022 that Canada has lost jobs this much. The sectors mostly affected were support services and businesses accounting for 31,000 jobs, an equivalent to a 4.4% decline overall. In Alberta, youth unemployment reached a jaw-dropping 11.3% in May, double the average provincial unemployment rate of 5.7%. Statistics Canada reports that returning students, especially those between 20 and 24, enjoyed a 69.5% employment rate in 2022. But fast forward one year later, it dropped to 63.8%. About 25 years ago, students could easily get a summer job and work to pay for their tuition. Sadly, times have changed. Canada's population keeps multiplying, but the economy is not creating enough jobs to absorb the teeming workforce. Job vacancies are rare, and the labor force is loosening. Now, the government wanted to create more jobs, which is fantastic, but it went about it in the wrong way. Between 2017 and 2022, it went on a hiring spree like never before. The period saw Canada add the same number of civil servant jobs as the US, a country with 10 times its population. This created an imbalance with the private sector looking to hire new employees, and finding none. Labor shortages make it impossible for most private companies to explore all business opportunities available to them. It became so terrible that industries no longer function at full capacity or were forced to reduce their working hours for lack of staff. It is counterproductive for the government to compete with the private sector for wages. Even worse, the government offers higher wages that the private sector simply can't afford. Canada's economy grew by 3.2% in 2022, beating the G20 averages of 3% and 2.9%, respectively. However, post-pandemic issues, weak investment, inflation, and slow productivity growth are dragging the economy back. Although experts predict a 1.5% growth in 2024, these figures are below the G20 average of 2.2% and 2.7% in 2023 and 2024, respectively. Is there hope for this North American country? We want to hear from you. Please head on down to that comment section and share your thoughts. And as always, thank you for watching.